describing to people what I do for a living, I, I try to make it a lot, a lot simpler these days. It was really fun, you know, 15 years ago, because it's an exciting job. You know, people want to know about it. I just help artists make the record from top to bottom, from finding songs to, you know, delivering the record. Hello, my name is Gary Pichosa, and we are here in Nashville, Tennessee, in my studio that I call Minutia. Um, I'm an A&R guy for Rounder Records and producer and engineer. The studio, I think we built this about 20 years ago. I think that's right, probably around 2000. And the, the point was just to come here and do vocals, you know, just to build a really nice vocal room. But as it's, as the whole industry has changed, you know, and budgets have gone down, I do everything here, you know, I'll track full bands. So yeah, what started out as something I thought would just be vocals, is full on, full on recording facility. I started with, uh, I was a, an assistant engineer for a couple of years, maybe two years, intern, assistant, not very, you know, not very long. And, uh, and I happened to land a Dolly Parton record. I just cut a couple of demos for her and she asked if I would make this Christmas record. And she didn't know that I had no idea how to make a record. That was my big break and, you know, made that record with Dolly and that led to, you know, a lot more Dolly records and then Alison Krauss then Dixie Chicks, um, Nickel Creek, John Prine, Steve Martin, Sarah Jarose, Katie Pruitt, Billy Strings, and Sierra Farrell. Okay, I think we got it. What people like most about working here probably is my dog because the artists can't have it, you know? It's like they're on the road, so they don't have pets. They remember all their pets from, from when they were kids growing up. When I'm tracking, I, I spend a lot of time, you know, on my input list and going over lots of, you know, options and, you know, talking to the assistant engineer, you know, about, about gear, microphones, if things are in good working order, because a lot of times she'll show up and, you know, 67 that was great last time but is not working now for tracking i've always got a lot of you know extra mics set up ready to go so that we can quickly you know drop in and make changes between takes you know in a matter of seconds try something else um, for me that's really what it's about is having options you know readily available why i've had success is because i'm i'm really prepared because you want tracking, you want everything to be seamless, you know, so that if there's ever a hiccup, you know, the artist is not feeling that. Talking about great recordings, I mean, it's definitely microphones for me, first and foremost. I mean, it's, it's also instruments, it's guitars, amps. Um, you know, those old consoles had so much flavor to them. That, you know, the old records, there were a lot of things that went into those. You know, but these days with everything being, you know, available in the workstation, to me, this is still the most valuable thing is the microphone. Recording like a vocalist that you've not worked with before, that's always a challenge. It's, it's also, it's fun because you've really got to have your shit together and have, you know, try and study ahead of time and try to figure out what kind of singer it is so at least you can zero in somewhat on your microphone choice or choices. But I'll always have a, a handful, you know. I'll have up a couple of, you know, the main microphones, the large diaphragm, and, and then have up a couple of room mics just in case, and then usually something funky, you know. I always like mixing in, you know, some ratty mic, something. Maybe that's what I'll use for the delays, you know, or that's what I'll use for to drive the reverb, just so that the verb has a different texture than what it, you know what you're getting through the mic. I stereo mic pretty much everything, you know, every every instrument. Like a guitar, there's so much going on, you know, in the, the whole area that it's like I really never found you know, one spot that covered everything I wanted. But I'll also mix in a junk mic. There's so much, you know, movement, or there has been movement towards, you know, distorted, crunchier sounds in the mix. 
I'd like to start with that, and then I can tweak it later to make it, you know, to make it more exaggerated or whatever. But usually stereo miking everything. Comping is, you know, that seems like that's, feels like it's three quarters of the job these days, you know. But I love comping vocals just because I can, you know, you can really, it's like editing in a movie, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm always blown away by editing in a movie because you know that they could have told the story so many different ways. And so it's the same thing with a vocal, that if I get enough performances, and I usually try to get a fair amount, performances that we can really shape it. So that's the fun part of comping vocals is you really can tell a story. And same thing with solos and instruments and all that, but to me more so on a, on a vocal. That's our only job, you know, is to move people with this with this music. It's to it's to convey the song. You know, that's that's definitely your job. Is what the, what did the artist have in mind for this? What did the producer have in mind? What were the discussions, you know, leading up to the direction of this? You know, and then and then pulling that off, you know, in a way that makes people feel something. You know, maybe things are meant to you know, make you feel angry or sad or whatever, but that's the main thing for me is, is emotion. I know when I don't feel it. It's like, oh, that's a really, you know, cool mix with lots of, you know, cool delays going on and, but it's like, I don't feel anything, you know. Um, so that's, that's what I'm looking for, is to be moved. I started using Cubase, I think it was 2001, Nuendo. And it was on a Dixie Chicks record down at Cedar Creek. Cubase just showed up at the studio like the morning I got there, you know, in a box. And they're like, this is what we're, this is what we're doing. The producer, Lloyd Maines, was the one who was into doing that. But, but we didn't have a clue what we were doing. First digital workstation, you know, that I'd ever worked on. It's pretty hairy, but we figured it out. I've worked on, you know, multiple different DAWs. And even now, when I go track somewhere else, some of the places here in Nashville don't have don't have Cubase, so I've got to track it into something else and then import it into into Cubase. Sonically, it sounded better. Like we went and when it first came out, you know, we went and did an AB at a studio. There were back then there were a lot of engineers that would get together and do blind tests, and you know they set them up side by side, and there was no comparison. I get a depth and a width that I don't hear anywhere else. The minute I'm thinking about it in Cubase, I'm, I can do it. I don't feel like a programmer. I've got to have, you know, gazillion quick keys. Love everything about Cubase. It's just so nice to have the, you know, the EQ and all the processing on each channel without having to put a, put a plug in. Even if I change that later, if I want to try something else, to be able to have immediate access to all of that. If I'm thinking about trying it, it's just really easy to do it.